Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about what happened this week. Here's a recap of the week. The S&P 500, after Jerome Powell started speaking on Wednesday at 2 p.m., or the minutes got released at 2 p.m., he started speaking at 2.30 p.m., and the market took off, right? So the market got just what it expected. It got the 0.25 rate hike, right? The Fed funds rate hike. So then at that point on Wednesday, that day was January, oh, February 1st. So Fed came out February 1st. Um, here it is, right on this date, market was going sideways, okay? Um, then boom, took off at 402, tapped 402 twice, and jumped to 417. Now this level right here, this purple line, I've had drawn on my charts for a long time. You can see this is an important level where price has gotten stuck before. It's a sticky area with price even back as far as 2021 in October. That's where the candle bodies were resting on this uh, sticky area of price. So if I zoom this out and you see where this re this uh, 417, sorry, um, let me back it up real quick. 417 level is still right, uh, right here. So 417.62 has been a resistance level ever since May of 2022, my correction, and it's been holding ever since, even up until now. So now that we've tapped it, we're gonna try to work above it, but we're probably gonna pull back a little bit below it first. Why is that, right? Price takes stair steps up, elevator down, stair steps up, elevator down. So price is working its way higher, but here's the thing. Stochastic RSI is above 80, which is a reset level, both on the weekly, just about, and the daily. So we could have a nice big pullback here below the 400s, even the 380 or below. Uh, we just have to keep an eye on it because if we do get a nice pretty 3X on the daily, right, when that does happen, you see that there is some action to the downside. So we haven't got any 3Xs yet. We're still bullish sideways up. Um, but with this, you know, this is kind of a failed, uh, this is kind of called a shooting star on the daily. So taking into account the shooting star, not very good sign. And then tapping that 417.62 level that's been drawn ever since May 2022. So nearly one year ago, here we are in February, kind of coming up on May in just a, three months. Okay, so just wanted to show that. And also, I want to show you guys that Stocks that are not worth very much are running, right? If they're running, going up, and the market is kind of trying to figure out where it's going next, um, and it, it may not have bottomed yet, right? The market may not have had its bottom. So what does that look like, right? Carvana sold off so hard from 300, let's see, that its peak was $376 a share. Ridiculous. This is what happens when free money, easy money gets pumped into the system, it finds its way to the big hedge funds, and then they're also able to borrow and put things on margin and just rack things up to the sky. So that's exactly what happened. A lot of money went in and bought this stock, right? The stock can't go up unless money is with inside it, right? Unless there's buyers. So now the, the stock has gone down from $376 to $355 just here in December. Okay, that's because Carvana's not doing very well. That's because inflation is high. People are, are not buying autos right now. They're buying, they're keeping their used vehicles. They're fixing them up. So maybe a stock like Advanced Auto Parts is going up or AutoZone because people are buying those parts to keep their vehicles in good running condition because they're not buying new ones. Carvana thrives on you buying a new vehicle for you, right? So that that's used or new, and then they deliver it to your door, no questions asked, right? So you might get into a big, unconventional loan with like 10, 15, 20, 25% interest rate because you are not there at the dealership negotiating and you might have issues with your car, right? It might be a hidden uh, accident car that got fixed and never reported. So all these things are kind of, you know, to Carvana's advantage, but also to its downfall. So right now, this is just action as far as you know, we were at 355, three bucks for the stock, and then we jumped up to 20 on some news via options, right? It was just, there's really no news besides a bunch of option volume. 
And that's because traders saw this move from three to four, four to five, five to six, watching it, watching it hold this EMA on the daily, right? This 50 day in the EMA. And then they said, hey, look, it's probably got potential to go higher here. It's holding this area of support at $6 and they started buying options. Well, when they buy options, the market maker is liable to buy the underlying stock when there's that many options available because some of the stock might actually not only just be used to trade with options, but it might also be exercised and need to be given out to the participants. So when the options uh, buyers are buying more and more options, this market maker has to keep buying the stock to therefore offset the options and then the, the price keeps going higher and higher. Now we have this blow off at 20 and now we're at 14, 45. So this looks like a typical short squeeze. I don't know if you're shorting the stock and you're trying to go to zero. I think there's a tax benefit if you're a large institutional, um, you know, hedge fund. I don't think you have to pay taxes on the gain if you do succeed in the company going bankrupt or zero. It's some sick thing like that. But uh, essentially, right now they were holding their shorts on, and the option, the call options kept going up, and there became a short squeeze. As you can see, you know, something going from six dollars and originally 350 going to six dollars and then twenty dollars is not normal and then that kind of speculation and froth and excess that that you see right there happening is not typical at the bottom of a bear market at the bottom of a bear market everybody is like scared to buy and you could say that was like october and december of 2022 but I don't think we've had that true meltdown point yet. So I'm looking for that true meltdown point of the whole entire market, which could be March of this year in 23, or it could be June, July, uh, where the summer lows take place. Um, probably not October, but it could even go as late as October. You never know what exactly is gonna happen, but this year I don't think we're done going down. I think this was an amazing rally up and much needed to reset the indicators to get people on the right side of of the trade and then I think there could be some downside here just because everything is pretty high up. Uh, we can look at the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Same kind of thing here with um, SPY, right? It's hitting these resistance levels that I've had uh, posted for a very long time, 309, 311, and then 314. So this is very uh, sticky area, right? This 314, 309, 314 level and 311 have been holding for the past year, um, if not more than that. So very uh, notable areas of interest. Now the weekly still pointed up, MACD spread and wide, histograms are getting larger, Stoke is above 80, but not both of these, um, you know, uh, graphs, not both of these lines of stochastic RSI are not above 80. Um, DMI is cross going up. Now the daily is kind of pinned above 80. There should be a pullback soon. It's not normal to just keep going up, 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 up. Because if you do that, the market's going to throw up, up, up. So uh, it needs to. We need a pullback for health, for health reasons in the market. Maybe to 280, um, and then it could keep going higher, or we could break down and break the lows of October, which we did go ahead and test in um, December, which I was very impressed that it went and tested those lows of, uh, you know, October. And I think that's good. That's healthy. And then we took we took a rise from there. So let's see. The market's still pointing up. Um, there's no reason to be buying a bunch of puts right now. But if you were interested in buying puts and you're like, hey, I want to think very far out into the future. I want to think, you know, um, like maybe the large money's thinking. Well, if you do that, you go to the end of March, you can look at, I don't have open interest up right now on here, but that's just how many people are, are excited or um, have an idea about, you know, they're already in the option and there's how many traders are already in that uh, option contract. But let's say you said, hey, we're gonna go break the lows of SPY. Okay, SPY hit a low of 350, um, 348, 350. So if we're gonna go break that, you buy 10 of these for, you know, 104 bucks, let's just call it 100 bucks um, right here. Okay, so 107 or 111. So that's even, that's, so 10 of those would be $1,110, right? $1,170. Um, you you pay for the, the ask price, right? Not the bid, you pay the more expensive one, which is the ask. So you buy that, that you buy 10 contracts of that for a little over $1,000. Well, if you're right on that and it does it within the next month or month and a half, and it does it way before May 31st, you're gonna make, you're gonna turn 1,000 into 
over $10,000. Now that's the power of options, but that has to work perfectly and go down and break down to those levels. Now this very well could happen. I'm not saying you should take this trade or you should be in this trade. I'm not in this trade, um, but it's something that longer term investors look at, right? Where is the market going over weeks, months, years? So right now, the market's not saying it's going down for weeks, it's still saying it's going up. So let's wait and see if it says something else and then maybe we can make a trade like that. All right, guys, have a good weekend. Enjoy. Um, thank you for joining. Like always, please like and subscribe. Peace.